Hi guys, I'm Chris from Drummerverse and today we're talking to a couple of people that tour the world busking. Who are you and what do you guys do? I'm Jin. Uh, I play percussion and pretty much I th thought I was always a drummer until I started having to travel with music and then I decided I didn't know what I was as a musician so now I just try and play as much as I can of as many different things as I can. Yeah, I'm George, a guitarist and a singer now, I guess, I don't know. Uh, but we are both buskers, we've been travelling for the last two and a half years of what we make busking. That's yeah. So just one quick like side note, percussion question. So I obviously teach percussion and drums and I'm always trying to get people into percussion as well. Did you get lessons on percussion or did you just go straight into it? Um, how, how do you approach it? What do you choose? How do you decide what to play? Um, so, I've always been a kit player. I started playing drums in a Metallica cover band, which then went to like prog metal, nice. then, which went to pop, and then George and I kind of decided one day that we wanted to, to travel and, and play music along the way. And I came up, I found myself in a position that I've never been in, and that was I want to play music, but now I don't have the instrument that I've spent the last 10 years working on. So what do you do? Yeah. So for a while I was playing an empty guitar hard case while George would bust the, nice. the, the guitar. I would just hit the hard case. Yeah, cool. Uh, and then and then I ended up getting uh, discovering and getting a cajon. Um, and it's one of those typical peak headed drummer things. Yeah. <laughs> um, this thing. You think? Oh yeah. Show I, the show the busker's guy logo as well. It's super cool. Yeah. Yo. There it is. There we go. It's one of those things as a drummer. You're like, oh, I can already play drums, so percussion must be easy, right? Yeah. Oh, and totally. uh, Finder. and. It was a really, really nice reality check for me because it's like, oh my god, I, I only know this is this, you know, my right foot as the kick, and I only right, know this is the hats, and I only know this is this and this is this. So I had to retrain all my limbs to undertake different jobs depending on the instrument uh, I was playing. So I am completely, so I am completely self-taught. Yeah. Um, I have, you know, YouTube is your best friend, as you're probably watching this on YouTube right now. Yeah. It is your best instructor. Uh, but it's all pretty much just self-taught, going for it, and experimenting and not being afraid of sounding bad. Because yeah. you need to find out how to sound bad in order yeah, to definitely. find that to sound good. Yeah, sure. I love what you said about the coordination. It, it does completely change up. Yeah, when you yeah. have to think of this suddenly as your bass level, this is you know, your tambourine. But yeah, and have you always just played guitar or did you get that from other instruments? Uh, it was always guitar to start with. Yeah, yeah it was only in uh, primary school, high school, I did some electric guitar lessons, yep. which, and then I moved on to acoustic, and now I don't even know, I haven't played electric guitar forever, I don't know what to do with them really. And, and you're... Um, <laughs> but, but, cool. Yeah, so then I moved on to acoustic, yeah, and then yeah. through busking we've both started to, we just learned to sing really busking on the street, That's trying true. to pick that up, yeah. Yeah, and we, so you guys were both into music throughout what was popular at the time. It wasn't like classical music teachers or any of that sort of like old school way of learning. Uh, I think I've had about three drum lessons in my life. Cool. Uh, which I regret now mm. uh, because even just learning music is such, it's the foundation's the same for almost everything, right? When yeah. it comes to music, or, everything's the same. Except for percussion, you, you, music is, looks a little bit different. But uh, essentially, yeah, it's just. Played, played drums and got a kick out of that and that's what I've done. Yeah. Um, so, you guys have been busking for three years now? Three years. Yeah. How did you guys meet and how did you decide, okay, we're going to drop everything and go and start busking around the world? Well, we both met pouring beers at a bar. Um, I wasn't playing any music at the time actually. We kind of had a bit of a joke band together but it was like three jams and just... When you're cleaning the, the last glasses you start to sing because <laughs> yeah. everyone's out of the club sort of thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, pretty much along those lines and uh, we just decided one day that we both wanted to travel having neither of us had really traveled much before so we thought all right let's travel ah oh, but we've got no money all right maybe we should just start busking because you don't have to be good to busk yeah and then we left Melbourne with about with a couple hundred dollars between us yeah three songs not even singers. So these are three not original songs. We're talking just songs in general that you guys. Yeah, just yeah. yeah. It was like wow. we were great. Yeah, it was kind of like the songs you know you're gonna make a bit of money from. It was like yeah. an outcast yeah. song and this oh, and that. Cool. And we don't. What were the three songs? Just to uh, know, because it, it was it was Hey Ya. Hey Ya. Macklemore can't hold us. Wow. And, and, wow. And that's kids, cool. Kids by MGMT. Yeah, and, uh, and uh, Drift Away. Don't oh, be great. Yeah, that was Drift the old school. But yeah. some of those songs that we don't even play just because. 
we were, we never played them very well, yeah. and then we never. Now we, we we slowly get better, but we never relearn them in yeah, a way. Yeah, like. re- so re- we go back to them. We're like, oh, we don't like these anymore. Yeah, we're just yeah. singing so, our old crappy habits from two and a half, three years ago. Yeah, that's so awesome. It's, it's I love it. Like the concept is like it's never too late to start. Well, it's never too early either. You guys had four songs, and you just went, you drove away. So sort of yeah, we were like, yeah. you know what. We want to travel the world, but let's at least see if we can get up the east coast of Australia first. Sure. So um, we we got in a car and literally drove to Ellie Beach and back. And we had the best time ever, even though we were by far the worst musicians that we'd come across. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> on that entire trip. Yeah, yeah. Um, but you know, we were doing something that a lot of the really good musicians were afraid to do, and I'm like, if we were even a quarter as good as you, yeah, this trip yeah. would be so much easier. But we're still doing this trip, and we're still yeah. alive, and we're you yeah. know we haven't starved to death. We're still playing for our beds in, in some of the places, so... Yeah. Alright, so you went there and then you basically went around the coast of Australia. Is that how you, you travelled around? Yeah, it was like, we first, as kind of the early stage, test stage, was the east coast. Yeah. Which did pretty damn well, considering we just started. But we made it up to Ellie Beach and then back down to Melbourne. And then we're like, then we're getting ready to do the next stage, to see how far we could get, in a way. Yeah. So we spent a couple of months in Melbourne, we bought some new gear and we wanted to leave with lots, like a bit more money. Yeah, <laughs> but in yeah. the end, because we bought a new Cajon guitar, got a car ready and then we oh, just... Also, what car were you guys travelling in? And were you sleeping Chance. in the car at time? Heaps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. did. Yeah. Uh, we cha- the cars changed a few wagon. times. Yeah. Oh, cool, cool. And yeah. you just put sort of like a, like a bat in the back sort of thing? And nah. Yeah. We oh, just... <laughs> I don't know, back in the seats like that. Oh, okay. wow. Yeah. There you go. On the side awesome. of the highway, anywhere. Yeah. Anywhere. Eventually, we got camping gear and we could sometimes cool. Sometimes we jumped out and camped. And it's questionable yeah. what's better, sleeping on the side of the highway on a foam mat just this big, yeah, yeah. or just or sleeping in a freaking car. Yeah, yeah. Seat, man. Oh, wow, that's awesome. <laughs> and then I love it how it's like you went from that going to a tent was like, you know, a four star hotel. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, yeah we're like, not that's, using it. You're going to set up the tent. It's going to be You know, your back just like thanks you the next day. Totally. Oh man, that's awesome. So yeah, we got we got back to Melbourne, uh, very poor, and thought, okay, well, let's invest some money in some gear. Left poor again because we invested money in gear. Went from Melbourne to Adelaide to Perth up to Darwin. Cool, and that was with the Cajon at this point. You yeah, so yeah, we had yeah, yeah. Yeah, the, the first Cajon we left for the East Coast trip was a $90 job off eBay and that, yeah. that lasted the three months before yeah. it got its head kicked in and, yeah. at a random party. And for the East Coast, for the East Coast, <laughs> we had a bad a bad busking setup. Like the speaker we had had to run from a gel battery that was like 10 yeah, kilos. Right. So it was kind of good to do that first test and when we got back to Melbourne. Hey, that battery was 30 kilos, man. The battery was 30 kilos. Yeah, I remember the battery yeah. was like 30 yeah. kilos. That's crazy. But uh, then we got back to Melbourne and we invested in the, the, the new busking app which had AA batteries. So for the west coast the busking was a lot better, easier to like carry that stuff around. So we had a new guitar, new cajon, so like the whole busking setup was good. We're yeah. starting to figure out what is good to travel with and what is not good to travel with. It, and it, yeah. That's when it was getting to that point where we were like, now the busking setup's good, the instruments are good. We know if anything sounds bad, it's us. It's, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, so yeah. everything can come back to us. It's like yeah. we got to make sure we're harsh reality. Yeah, yeah, totally. yeah man. But, but that's probably would have been the biggest learning curve at yeah. that point because you know you yeah. can't absolutely exposed. Yeah, that's it's it. like that. Wow. And so you're busking around Australia still before you go international, and it's do you meet people on the road and do you sometimes get gigs through them and like end up playing house parties? Do you play at bars or is it still mainly busking? Yeah. Uh, all of the above, man. Yeah. Yeah. Like, busking is not something I'd ever considered doing while I was playing drums on stage because I yeah. thought playing on the street isn't going to get me to where I want to be as a musician. I want to play bigger gigs, bigger gigs. So naturally you think I need to play more gigs on stage, on the stage. Yeah. And then we started busking and then honestly just getting more offers than anything like than any other time before in my musical and this career. is in small country towns as well and there totally. isn't that much yeah, yeah. Totally. yeah so definitely. like we would rock up in a town for example we rocked up in one town uh what's it called more no not one Wonder- or the next one across anyway Somewhere. it's on the, on the south, south coast. coast yeah no money no way to stay we, yeah. w- we walked into a pub and we're like hey we're just too Buskers, we have one hour town. of music. We've got yeah. one hour of music. Yeah. The rest is questionable. Uh, can <laughs> the we... rest is for the third or fourth <laughs> <set>. <laughs> Can we, can we play a set for a feed and, yeah. and some beers? Yeah. Um, and they're like, yeah, for sure. We'll give you a feed, beers, a night accommodation. 
So we played our hour set. They just fed us a ridiculous so amount many of beers. Pints, like yeah. this is an hour after we'd walked in there off the street. Yeah, yeah. They gave us an extra night accommodation and invited yeah. us to their staff party that day. Oh, so we just ended up at a staff yeah. party drinking beers with all the people from this pub. Like, how did this happen? Yeah. And it was literally just walking in there and saying, "Can we please pay for?" It? For fish and chips. So, so when, so when <laughs> that's it. Like, yeah, yeah. The deal's always better when you have such low expectations. Yeah. You know, that, and so at that point, you're like, okay, I can, I can do this. Like that, that's when it would have been like the switch would have happened. Okay, I'm going to do this for a while. Yeah, I, I, I feel like I was pretty. We were both pretty committed to seeing as much as we can from busking, but mm. that was definitely one of the experiences where I thought, you know what? Anything could happen. Anything is this, just you know, a question yeah. away. You just yeah. have to ask the right person at the right time, oh, and definitely. you're always going to get more no's than yeses. But yeah. those yeses are worth the 50 no's you got before it. and if you're getting like 50 no's a day as long as you get one yes every thousand you're yeah. gonna get the right one the right opportunity yeah sense. yeah just further up the west coast in Broome which is just like the most amazing place yeah. to be anyway in yeah. busking uh, we used that was where we made some of the most of, amount of money on the west coast just because they had this week, weekly market there yeah we got up oh actually before that there was uh, all the main cafes in town yeah when we get to a town like we we like our coffee and yeah. breakfast and stuff and we always don't want to pay for it. Yeah. So we walked down the street and we find the cafes that are really busy or the best ones. Yeah. Just walked in and uh, asked if they would like us to play music there. Like, even yeah. we just busk out the front. Yeah. And so a few mornings in a row in, in Broome, we would go for a breakfast at this cafe and we just busk yeah. out the front, make money from the customers. They end up giving us like free big breakfast, twenty yeah, yeah. Cafe breakfast feeders, free coffee. Oh, yeah. that, is, that sounds delicious. So, like, it's such a great way to start the <laughs> yeah. day, right? Let's go to brew right now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty hungry. So I like, got up, start the day like that. We earn money, all this free yeah. stuff. Someone who was sitting there eating was uh, this lady and you know, we just end up talking to everyone then. She's like, she's having a birthday party that night. Yeah. Uh, do you guys want to come and play for that? Yeah. We're like, all right, got that address off her. Yeah. So we're going to arrive there that night. And then there's the market on down the road. Went down, played the brew market during the day. Earn a couple hundred dollars there. You get like more free food from all the people. Yeah. Like, the, and the it's good food too because it's like market. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. awesome. If you keep the storeholders happy in a yeah. market, yeah. you get set up. So, you've already told me before. I asked you one of the questions I asked you was like, what were some of the strategies to not get kicked out? And as you pointed out, if you go to the cafe and you say, "Can we bask out together?" They're probably not going to kick you out. They're going to, you know, embrace yeah, it. And yeah, help definitely. You out. As you're first starting off, what are some other strategies that you, you know, to avoid that sort of like getting kicked out and things like that? Maybe when we were first starting, we were doing those four or five songs early on. It was like we were under a train, we were in like a train tunnel area. Mm. So at least we knew people walking by pretty fast. And because you don't want to be the person on the corner playing the same songs. Will you play these like five songs maybe like five times and then go? Oh, like, not, like not even. Like I think we only just played like five. Like we'd play those four or five songs. Or maybe we played them twice over. Yeah. Did yeah. a few other ones and then we left. Yeah. Like we didn't want to play the same ones just non stop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even early. And even at the start when we thought we weren't, like we knew we weren't too good. Uh, we, we um like we wouldn't play maybe on a corner where this restaurant's gonna hear us over and over again. Yeah. yeah. So like, we waited until we felt a bit more confident and then we'd hit the corners and but just yeah. don't sit there playing Riptide for, you know straight for an hour. Yeah. Well, I, I think being mindful of the environment is something that a lot of I think works into your favour every single time. And we I do see a lot of buskers that are like this is my act this is what I do I'm gonna do it here because here it's the busiest and then I should make the most amount of money. And it's like not everything works for every space. Yeah. Um, so the it's- playing pots and pans. Yeah, like, like yeah, pots and pans go. in the middle of a, a, a busy walkway. Like, it sounds like a construction site a lot of the time. Yeah, 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 to, definitely. For me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, no, I could see what Especially from a long way away, if it's a tunnel and the, like in the, and the noise is going all in one direction, it screws it over for every other bus. So a lot of people aren't mindful about their environment. So I think complementing an environment and checking with all the people around you, even if they don't like it, you've come up and you've shown good faith and said, yeah. "This is what I'm doing." They're more like, like they're more inclined to not call anyone on you yeah, because you've you've come up out of good faith and said, "Yeah, hey, I want to make some music. I hope I don't annoy you. Let me know if it is too yeah, loud." Yeah. Blah blah blah. And we've actually had more opportunities from doing that um, that have come out of that than than just going and setting up and being like. I'm a busker, I can do whatever the hell I yeah. want. So, um, you, you start busking around, alright? Do you get to a point where you're like, okay, we've got our repertoire down, we know that we're going to be going to Calberry next week, should we call some places and ask if they're even interested in us actually playing here? Or do you always just keep it like busk, you go there, busk, meet the people on the spot? It's, it's definitely a mixture of the two. So you do do a bit of like pre-organised? At, at this point, the West Coast, the, the only things we all we tried to pre-organize a little bit was playing for our accommodation at hostels. Yeah. Uh, because this was the best way we saved money 
for yeah. the whole last three years yeah. would be playing uh, for our accommodation. It's probably the only hostels. reason why we've been able to sustain it for as long um, as we And half the time, like, we've we've managed just to walk straight into a hostel and be like, can we play for a bed? And it's worked out. Yeah. But it's, uh, it's definitely not as easy as when you email them. They can see our Facebook page. Uh, and we just tell them what we're doing and like, and because the hostels book can book out pretty easy as well. Yeah, definitely. So it was just, just with the hostels, we tried to book them in advance. We'd only book in a few days, but once we get there and start playing music, most of the time they're like, you guys can stay for a few weeks. Yeah, that's yeah. It. So yeah. as long as that, just get a small foot in the door uh, with that. And otherwise, we, it was mainly just rocking up on the street. But we did have to look up like busking permits and the licenses, yeah, all that kind of stuff. That's something that's like massive in WA. I don't know about other places, but like yeah, you have to get busking around the world, man. It changes oh, with every, so yeah, every crazy. Okay, so every country you went in, there was still most of the time yeah, busking. Yeah, busking. Yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow, there you go. And I'm that's really kind of what made us want to start the website as well. Or at least yeah. once we started the website, and we're traveling. We're like, this, the, what we're making here is a good thing for buskers because we're getting confused, like changing towns yeah. and districts and the rules are changing. Yeah. We're like, it's cool to try and make a website where we just have one place, head there and you can see you know, all the rules of Australia and where you're going. Yeah. Because it's a lot of Google searching and messing around. That's it. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Um, we'll talk about that as well, the website later, because that's super yeah. awesome. Um, so then you decide, okay, we've done Australia, it worked. How much funds, instruments, like what do you bring with you before you went overseas? Like, talk, talk to yeah. about that. That's interesting. So we flew, the first overseas trip was from Darwin to Singapore, which okay. isn't a terribly yeah. long flight, yeah, yeah. but it's a, it's, you know, Singapore. Did you bring the full setup? Yeah. So we brought the BA three thirty. Well, we brought a whole Try. bunch of shit actually, <laughs> uh, but then we got to the airport and we were over thirty kilos, and oh. they said. If you want to take all your stuff, that's $900. And we're like, well, we don't even <laughs> have half of that. Yeah. Uh, or a house in Darwin to put it in. <laughs> yeah, well, like, anyway, oh, so yeah, we, we, we emptied everything out of the suitcase, weighed the empty suitcase. That was $125 on its own. So it's like, yeah, all right, suitcase. suitcase has got yeah. to go. Now we've got all this crap that was in it. Threw out our shoes, threw out tambourines, threw out leads, threw out everything. Most of our clothes. Most yeah. of our clothes. Um, got it down to a point where we were a couple of kilos over and they kind yeah. of he was like, were like, okay, we right. get it. You've chucked out it half your life. Yeah, yeah. Um, so there we got there with garage sale in like the airport oh, to try yeah, and make the yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? Such a waste that you have to check yeah. so much stuff out. But we left we kept we left with our cameras, Gahan guitar, the BA three hundred thirty, which is our busking yeah. amp, a small desk, leads, and then whatever whatever clothes, which yeah. which wasn't much, like we yeah. had next to no clothes. We threw out yeah. most of our personal items to get the gear across. Yeah. And that, that was in Singapore. So yeah, that and was... And did you come back to Darwin or did you sort of stay in Asia at that point? So we... Was actually, it a one-way ticket? Yeah, one-way okay. one ticket. Yeah, yeah. So we had plans to get to India by by the Christmas or January or something. Uh, Singapore, we ended up playing for our beds. Cool. Uh, we stayed there for a month. And we stayed there yeah. for a month for free. Nice. Like, playing for our beds. So we didn't earn a lot of money. They're quite strict in Singapore on a lot of things, but there are some kind of little hacks that you can do to go and earn a little bit of money busting yeah, there yeah. on our website. Nice. Um, but we found Singapore quite tough as they are dollar yeah. for dollar with Australia usually. Yeah. Uh, and then the next plan was like... Oh, like you mean for food and things like yeah. that. Yeah, so we found some yeah. cheap eating places but... but it is pretty expensive It's an expensive, yeah. expensive city country. Okay. Okay. And then we did, then we went to Malaysia. Yep. And we spent... <laughs> We spent we wanted six months living in Malaysia by accident. <laughs> so we wanted to we'll, go. We'll pass by there for a couple of days. Yeah, yeah, six yeah. months later. So the plan is <laughs> to go through happened. Malaysia, you know, Thailand, Vietnam, yeah. Cambodia, India. Yeah. But like we were living when you're just living off nothing. Like we're living off what we made week to by week. Yeah. And we got up to Malaysia. And we, you know, we had a free accommodation as long as we we're playing music. Yeah. We're, the whole time we're like, okay, we just got to earn enough money to get north, and we just we were just every time we made money, it disappeared again. Yeah. And so. We'll, it was fun, but we were yeah. kind of just stuck there in this thing. Like, yeah. um, what so, are so, do? so you couldn't leave, basically. Yeah, we couldn't. Yeah, we, couldn't yeah, we, yeah, were, okay. we were we were stuck in Malaysia yeah. for six months. <laughs> 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 when we opened a bar on a rooftop, yeah, we were selling alcohol. We were selling toast and sandwiches that we made yeah. in between sets. Wow, beer we were running. So beer pong yeah, table. we set up a beer pong table. Yeah. We, were, um, we, were, <laughs> we were running about beer pong. Yeah. We were running poker to try and make money wow. from poker. Yeah, like yeah. we were just trying to hustle everywhere yeah. we could. Yeah, oh, uh, it was. It was. You know, probably one of the six, those six months. I like they were the. Yeah, they were the best. You basically man. filled your CV for the rest of your life. You've done every job. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, there were some crazy. There were some crazy places we went. Uh, and I remember when I went up to Penang, there's 
for a hostel there. And this was one where we emailed them, we're like, oh, we want to play for a bed, but they never really properly got back to us. We're like, let's yeah. just, we booked one night, yeah. and we rocked up there, and we're going, let's just see what happens. Yeah. Hopefully they let us play. Um, and they were a bit like, oh, maybe, maybe. So we arrived, we paid for one night stay, met the owner, and he's like, okay, you guys can play tomorrow night, yeah. just for a night or two. Yeah. And then it got to the next night, and we we're about to play, and he's like, oh, We've got this uh, whiskey tasting night on down the yeah, road. This yeah. big like at their conference. boutique, uh, yeah, like, hotel. like this big rooftop bar. Yeah, rooftop. All the guys are kind of suited up. And yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like this American company or something that like's trying to sell their whiskey stuff. Yeah. All these bottles of whiskey, and he's like, "You guys want to come play music for that?" Were well, these like Malaysian like fat cat sort of thing? Was it like oh, that sort no, of part? Like, yeah, like, yeah, okay. Yeah, and then they got there. Awesome. Like, let's book the buses, guy. Yeah. yeah. So he's like, <laughs> "Don't you don't even need to play here at the hostel. Yeah. Come down the road and let's and just play on this rooftop." So we went down there, played the rooftop for an hour. Uh, yeah, and then, so and then the owner was pretty nice. He's like, we just stayed yeah. a few more nights at the hostel. So yeah. that was pretty cool. It's like that was something just worked out pretty randomly. Awesome, yeah. man, Malaysia. That sounds awesome. Malaysia. That's yeah. another thing. Like about the language. I guess you were mainly in places where everyone could speak a bit of English. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. Did you ever get like a language barrier in pla like a few what? places? It was hard. Like in some pockets of Malaysia, it was hard. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, but other than that, yeah. like most of the time, we we're in places that we knew that it wasn't going to be too difficult yeah. and that's like so far like this journey hasn't ended so so yeah. far we've been really lucky yeah. like that but we will be busking the next three months all over europe yeah. um and i imagine there will be a few places where like, there are really big language barriers that yeah. we're going to have to try and navigate yeah and so malaysia you, so from malaysia you went straight to india did you pass by like Laos? no Canada? so we ran out of money and then yeah. we flew to cape town and we had to audition it was the first oh, what, it was actually it was actually license. the first yeah. one that we actually auditioned for and yeah. we never wow. did. i think we used it once when we it was coming up to valentine's day it took a long time to get that license for valentine's yeah. day wow. so we went busking for yeah chicks yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, as you do know, as the master's guide does on that Valentine's Day. Yes. So you actually have to audition to get a, a license for, some of them for the do, waterfront. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. oh, um, that's a privately owned space. Yeah. A lot of the cool. public ones might not. Make but we it. played a couple of open mics in Cape Town, and it was pretty cool. Like, it seemed like yeah. really good musicians there, awesome music. Yeah. Scene. Open mics are a great way to learn about the scene. I mean, and, and to we, get we played for our accommodation there for the first. Few days and the hostel was awesome, like the best buffet breakfast. You know that free buff breakfast yeah. in the hostel. Better than, like host better than a lot of hotels, best. I reckon. Yeah. 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 Do you the guys even, like in Cape Town? Yeah. Pack. So you guys on your website, you actually review the places you play at. And we don't re we don't really right? review it, but yeah. we have on our website we got Australia with like all the most of the capital cities, yeah. a few other places, and then I've got a Malaysia page, yeah. and it's just got the busking permit like information for okay. each of the places awesome. to read yeah. first, and then it's got like. Yeah, play to stay hostels. But yeah. anything that's on there, we just think is awesome. So we yeah. usually put a what's few. So what's the actual website link? Like www.thebuskersguide.com. Awesome. Yeah. But and if there's Facebook a hostel, we, YouTube well. yeah, Facebook, yeah. YouTube, yeah. Instagram. And yeah. like on your YouTube, you have like a whole bunch of wicked stories of people that you meet and just you know. Just yeah. yeah. So there's about 32 videos of our awesome. Drifter Diaries, which is yeah. this camera here filming us day to day trying to survive. All really real, like not yeah. nothing's rehearsed so you, or written. All, all the videos on there is like the first uh, six months or so. So it's the yeah. east coast yeah. down to the down getting to Perth, uh, and then it was just it was getting really hard to stay yeah. keep the videos up to date. Yeah. But it's still pretty cool oh. just to capture. It was the crashes then. Oh well. Capture the uh, <laughs> the prologue of yeah. like the buses guard. You see us kind of starting out when we're at our worst. But, cool. Yeah. But yeah, basically, the that whole reason why this is happening it? is because I told my students about you guys and they wanted to know a whole bunch of stuff, so let's, cool. let's, let's see what they said. Um, oh, this is a cool question. Uh, we've got here, what are more important qualities of being a musician, skill versus attitude, of the guys that you've played with and the guys that you've met on the road? Oh, mm. The most important uh, asset you can have as a musician is your attitude. I would rather tour with someone that is an okay musician but is a really cool guy yeah. than someone who is a really great player, but I don't think is that cool of a guy. Like, I'll pick the cool guy every single time. Cool. And, like, even now I'm about to go on this European tour, yeah. and I'm playing keyboard, which I didn't know. To st even knowing when we started the tour, it's like, oh, we've already got a guitarist, we might have a lead guitarist. Yeah. You can just play keyboard. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> even though I've never played it. So it's like, in the end, it's like you could get a good keyboardist, but we're like, oh, we're mates. We, yeah, we're, we're it. good. It'll be good to travel together. So like, you can just learn the instrument. Just get the so. arpeggiator and hold the note. <laughs> <laughs> Any like just general music and just life advice you'd like to pass on that you've learned in this past three years to people that are in your 12 wanting to make it in music? 
Too yeah. Big. Uh, <laughs> yeah. As a someone that started this trip at 26, um, it's never too late and it's never too early. Um, my, my only my advice would go out to me at the same age is whatever it is, just apply yourself because there's no point going for something that you think you want to do and just half-assing it because you just waste your own time. Yeah. So just apply yourself and mean it and because if you're not going to make yourself work that hard at something you do like someone's going to make you work just as hard at something you don't like exactly. and I would always you know we know which one we all prefer oh definitely and that's yeah. awesome man I think mine sim- would be similar it's like especially over the last few years but always with things like music and singing guitar you meet people that it feels like they have it in their DNA like they're born yeah. with these things and you never feel like you're going to get there but I think like that's something you really want to forget if you want to build up skills in music yeah. like you have to forget about like saying I was naturally born at this one good skill basketball so I have to be a basketballer yeah. or something because yeah. it's like I don't have I never felt like I have this natural skill with some of these things but it's like I ne- found that my natural skills when I was a kid I found them like more boring the ones that I actually had to work yeah. at it was weird yeah. like, I wanted to do music I wanted to skate I wasn't naturally good at those things yeah, you know? yeah. Really strange, right? so uh, it, it just comes down to yeah practice but if you enjoy it like you just want to put the hours into practicing it and yeah. just delete that thing from your memory thinking that you have to have this inborn skill in you because you can totally grow it yeah. and like yeah. you grow it quicker the quicker you get that out of your head and just yeah. say I can literally be as good as all these people that you're trying to be. No, that's awesome man. Um, have we like, it was, did you guys go anywhere else? You went to Europe for it's a small amount of so, time. So yeah, we, we, have, we um, did some gigs and we did another lap of Australia, Melbourne yep. to Perth, to Darwin, back to Perth. Would you go back to the same places or will you try and sort of change it up? Because once they know you, it's, it's yeah, much easier, it's, it's to, go much easier yeah. to go back in there. So, um, so you do you do try and stray from the path a bit, but you always take yeah. the path with the least resistance. Yeah. So we, we saved up for two year working visas for the UK yeah. um, for music, which is really cool. Yeah. We've got the flights, flew over there, got poor straight away yeah. in London. Don't go to London, it sucks. Unless you got money. <laughs> um, wow, uh, it's go. good, but no, 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 it's I, just I'm, I'm, the I'm, most hard, I'm, hardcore time we've spent in the last three years was a couple of weeks in London. And yet you're going to be back tough, there very yeah. soon. Yeah, then we're back <laughs> there. But no, be throwing it with a different um, band. But yeah, it's, but yeah th- there you go. I didn't expect like London would be so harsh out of all places. It's just, it's just a hard place to survive for anybody. Yeah. So especially a musician with no contacts that's trying to live off donations yeah. in a climate where people aren't out and about throwing money around because everything's hunky-dory yeah nah, cool. it's just it's tough they got the money there you just got to know the right way to way to get it so yeah, yeah we spent most of the time in Cardiff at a really cool hostel called Nozda um, they have put us up for three months playing music playing and music in our yeah. own room but playing gigs man like wait so incredible so, so yeah for, for three months you guys that was the base yeah. we still we went out to like Bath and Bristol we managed to travel a little is bit is that with food as well Oh, that's every morning, morning, every yeah, day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So nice. we just smashed that every morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but we've in in almost three years, we've only paid for accommodation twice. Nice. And we've done it all as mediocre yeah. musicians. So like yeah, anyone that yeah. thinks they can't do it, you just got to find it is what you're good at. Last question, just for the probably the most inspiring question out of all of them. What are some like awesome stories that you want to tell? <laughs> we keeping them relatively PG, but yeah, 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 go for it. Just I don't care, just go for it. So like maybe like one or two really good stories. Yeah. Like the best moments of these past three years. Um, what other things have happened? Uh, what was pretty ran- like something we did, which was pretty random and fun. I don't know, this is just the whole thing. Yeah. yeah. But uh, when we first went up the East Coast, uh, in Airlie Beach, we, we were going busking and uh, you're, not, you're not allowed to go busking there at all, actually. Yeah. So but what, a way to get away with it is you write a sign that says, not busking, and if you put that in your case. <laughs> and you put that in the guitar uh, case. And, and then you practicing busk. Practicing music. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, so we were, we were out there. We were out there not busking, yeah. but yeah. busking. And, and this dude walks by and he's like, I'm pretty sure you guys are busking, but here's 20 bucks. And we, we ended up, he, he was like a uh, hip hop, Guy, he like makes his own music, yeah. but it was like a bit of a rapper, hip hop guy from Noosa, the Sunshine Coast. Yeah. Um, and Crazy. we got to chat to him. We filmed a video with him for our website, and then in a few weeks later, he said he was having a beach party yeah. uh, down the Sunshine Coast. Nice. And we ended up being down there just in time for that. Yeah. Um, and it was it was awesome. We went and met him at the beach, and it like took all day to set up. He, him and like ten other 
of they the, set up full lighting rigs. Yeah, the like DJ like like and everything. everything. Like, it's it's, it's sick. proper beach party. Yeah, now, yeah. so he does it once a year for the last few years, but it's fully just in his clique, just people who know about it. But yeah. in the end, it's like 60, 70 people rock up in like Darth Vader outfits and hectic clothes. And have was it just, themed just all night? It, no, 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 it's just, just and it's fan. it's pretty special because it only attracts the right kind of people. Yeah. yeah. Just a quick question: Did you actually film some of this party as well? Yeah, this is in our. One of our videos going up the east yeah, coast. That's so cool. Uh, I think it's awesome. like Casey's it's on a YouTube beach one. party yeah. or something yeah. like that. Nice. And nice. so we went to this, and like they've just got a mic they pass between all the uh, guys like freestyling over this DJ. Yeah. DJ's going. But what was crazy? After we were like the biggest night ever, and then because we were out of money, um, and we need, we kind of just wanted somewhere to stay. We're out of money and food. Didn't know what to do, and we always wanted to do this. The next day, we got up and we drove out to. Uh, a Vipassana meditation course, yeah. which runs for 10 days, yeah. and where you can't talk, you have to meditate about yeah. seven or eight hours a day, yeah. but you get fed and you get a bed. <laughs> and and it was a great time to do that because we, we wanted to do this 10 day thing, but it's really hard when you're working any of these jobs, so what we're doing yeah. is like to get a whole 10 days off, yeah. and you want to use those 10 days for something else, but we're just traveling. Anytime an opportunity comes up, like we're there, and then we go to a beach party, and then we're like, oh, let's just might as well do 10 day meditation. Yeah. And then we did that before we came back down to Melbourne. But it was uh, it was a pretty crazy few days that we just Oh, it's such a, like even just like the the contrast, like that's so awesome. You know? yeah, yeah, that's wicked, man. Weird. That sounds awesome. Yeah, what was this? Weird. What was the MC called? Uh, his name's Casey Regan. Oh. I'm not sure what his MC name is. Yeah, like, but. He's an absolute. You guys are already on first name basis. Man. He's so <laughs> yeah, yeah. And he's so nice. cool. Cool. No, that's wicked, man. And yeah, I guess another another cool story. Um, this isn't. This is just something that happened on the trip, um, and it's not quite busking related. But you know, most of the stories that you will get from an adventure like this yeah. will not be directly related. They're just things that happen because you're at some place at some time. Yeah. But this was when we were in Cape Town and we went to a party. Um, and we're in the in the Uber because Uber is good everywhere. There's yeah. a tip for you. Uber. Only use Uber yeah. everywhere. <laughs> yeah. um, and we're driving past his house. And I'm like, man, his house looks familiar. Go past armed guards with like automatic rifles. Like this looks like the house from Iron Man, the oh, first man. one. And then George's bros like, but this house is the house from Iron Man. And this is what they modelled it off. So we went to this party, and we're like the two poorest guys in the world. Yeah, yeah. At, the, at this party that's full of just like the most wealthy, the most rich, or both. I yeah. mean, like, or the most yeah. pretty, or both. Yeah, like, yeah, they're all just yeah, models yeah. and, like, amazing yeah. looking people. And it's just standing out, looking over Camps Bay. There's, like, all these, in, like, there's intelligent, like, it's, like, it's, they're, it's in their house, but it's, like, a proper club that's been set up. Open bar. Oh, the cool, coolest thing about that was, like, it was there, like, 40, 50 people there, whatever. But the bartenders were just whoever wanted to go to bartend that were in the party. <laughs> oh, that's so, so, so cool. we were like, let's just jump behind the yeah. bar. We're, like, making yeah. beers okay. and drinking. It's like, there's you, just all You went stuff. from what you guys started off with, bartending. Yeah, you went yeah, back to yeah, it halfway yeah. through. Yeah. Like, you back party. the old let's days. Go right? yeah. um, that's awesome, man. <laughs> and then, yeah, um, and then uh, Luke's like, I'll, sh I'll show you the, the garage. And we're like walk in this room and he's like look down and we're standing on a glass ceiling looking down at just like P Porsches and Ferraris and like like it looks like Tony Stark's garage. Yeah, yeah, it was, it it was, was yeah. mental. But um and I was just like when would I have ever ever been able to come to a house like this and, yeah. and, and take it on and like it was kind of all it's all very vain, you know, it's yeah, like yeah, yeah. who needs this much shit? Yeah, but it was yeah, it was yeah, a really yeah. cool experience. But just touching back on the whole going to a party and uh and bartending, we yeah. did a lot a way that we save money traveling is by playing games. So we both travel with a PlayStation controller yeah. each, which we have Bluetooth to our Mac. Um, so oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, sure, we, sure, so sure. We, yeah. we do a lot of Steam gaming. We can yeah. put our Steam gamer tags if anyone's a Steam gamer. Nice. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but but, one, but one, one thing that we do, which is ridiculous, is that our favorite games at the moment are cooking games. So like yeah, Cook, yeah. Serve, Delicious. And what's the other one called? Overcooked. Overcooked. Yeah. So we'll be like in a foreign country, drinking beers, having an awesome time. And then it comes around, it's like eight o'clock and we're like, all right, Let's go back to the hostel room yeah, and, then, yeah. and then we just game like yeah, we've yeah. work anyway, work. <laughs> and just like work in a hospital job which is what we try yeah. to get away from to be yeah. busters. Nice, <laughs> nice. That's awesome man, that's <laughs> super cool. Um, obviously if they want more stories they can just check your old YouTube yeah, which yeah. is Busker's Guide on YouTube. Yeah, and pretty much everything's under the Busker's Guide. Yeah, any other plugs? So like Facebook is Busker's Guide, yeah, yeah, Busker's about Guide. The, the Instagram, Instagram the Busker's Guide, yeah. the cool. website and yeah we're just about to go on a European tour for a few months. The, the reason we're back here in Australia is because our friend uh, is about to go on a European tour as the singer. Uh, 
and he we're, we're friends with him and so he flew us back here to rehearse and go on this trip with yeah. him uh, and this has just really happened Bef before we started traveling and busking I only knew uh, Josh the guy we're traveling with as, as a friend not playing music with yeah so it's just been a, a random thing that's happened as well I don't know because of us playing music and traveling I, I, well. I guess that's another segue into you never know what's gonna happen just by getting freeing up your time and always playing music because we're taking never, everything except yeah, yeah. We're to do yeah. this but now we're like we're just buskers, but now we're going on an actual Europe three month yeah. European you know, tour. And the thing is, like some people, some users will think we've made it once we've done that three month European oh, tour. Nah, and if you would have kept playing covers, or you would have kept playing in that in, in, the, in those bands to try and get there, you took this complete alternative path, but you ended up at the same spot. Ended up the same, and yeah. who would have known if you would have been there, you know, three years later? That's yeah, the thing. definitely. So definitely. Awesome. And the like, thing is, he'll come back home after the tour. He'll yeah. be like, all right, we just played a bunch of festivals. Yeah. Pick the cajon back up and hit the street the next yeah. day, and just. You know what I mean? Like, I think music isn't about, I've reached here, so now I can never go back here. Oh, definitely or I've not. reached here and now I can never accept this. Yeah. I think music is totally about that roller coaster. Yeah. Otherwise, you just turn down every opportunity thinking that you deserve yeah. a better one when really people don't deserve much. You've got yeah. to make that happen, you know? Yeah, that's, that's a pretty great point to end on, I reckon. Well, <laughs> yeah, thanks guys, that's awesome. That's yeah, thank you. Show you how to turn it up and